Hi, this is Erin from MCP Actions. Today I'm going to show you how to use our Newborn Necessities Action Set in Photoshop Elements. This action set was designed primarily for babies, but it can be used on subjects of all ages. The examples that we'll be looking at today are all of newborn babies. I'll start by giving you a brief tour of the actions. You'll need to start by actually installing the actions. Once you unzip your download, you'll find inside a folder called How to Install in Photoshop Elements. You'll want to open that folder and look for the instructions specific to your version of Elements and your operating system. Once you get the actions installed, open Elements, look for your Effects tab over on the right, make sure that the third button, Photo Effects, is turned on, and then from the drop down menu, select MCP Newborn Necessities. Once you'll do that, you'll see a series of thumbnails, um, a thumbnail for each different action in the set. Now these actions are arranged in the order that we suggest that you run them in. If your workflow is different, there's no problem with running the actions in a different order. For us, however, this is the best photo editing order. You can see that the Thumbnails change in order to highlight visually the different sections of actions. So the first two actions are read. You'll definitely want to read through this set of instructions first. The next two actions are white. These are to increase or decrease exposure if you need to tweak your exposure just a bit before running the actions. The next set of actions, starting with sugar and spice, and ending with diaper bag. These red actions are our basic workflow actions. After that, the gray series are hazes that you can add to, to give your image just a bit of soft haze and color tint. The yellow set of actions are our workflow helper actions where you can brighten and darken midtones, work on highlights that are too bright, and apply spot lightening and darkening among other things. The next two actions, the blue ones, are just kind of handy shortcuts. It's nice to be able to revert, meaning to go back to the very beginning of your edit, or to have an easy way to flatten. Now these light pink actions are going to be the foundation of all your newborn editing. The hardest thing about newborns is often their skin tones, and so these pink actions are going to give you the tools you need to make the skin less red, less jaundiced, or less gray. Um, each of the fixes, whether it's red, jaundiced, or gray, can be applied either globally or as a spot fix with the paint on versions. Slide to Hush combines all three of the red, yellow, and gray reductions. Paint on formula will give you even more control over color correcting. And in my dreams, the last of the color correcting actions will help fix spot color issues like blotchiness, um, purple baby feet, things like that. Now these peach colored actions are going to smooth and brighten skin tones in babies. They're good for reducing baby acne. Um, you've also got some retouching for eyes, lips, and cheeks here. The last section is going to be some special fixes. If you've got a blanket that's not looking as bright and white as it should, we've got an action for that. We've got several vignettes that you can use, a couple of specific blur actions that will actually add a soft and natural looking blur to your photo. Um, if you're taking your picture of the baby in front of a white or black backdrop, we can make your backdrop look either whiter or blacker. And then finally, we end with a few sharpening actions, either for print or for web. We're going to start playing with these actions today by using this photo of a dad with his newborn on a gray background. The exposure doesn't need any work, so we can skip over the first two actions, the white section where we um, adjust exposure. We're going to go straight to diaper bag mix and match. 
diaper bag lets you combine all of the above actions, all of the workflow actions from sugar and spice through playtime. So I'm going to double click on the action to run it and it will build all of those actions together. This will let us combine the actions, um, experiment to find out which one we like the best and give us a lot of creative options. Now you will see as the action builds that this particular diaper bag action is going to put each separate effect into a folder. You can see here that we've got a folder for bedtime, nap time, play time, etc. There's a new one for vintage pram that's just been created. In Photoshop Elements, you cannot open these folders to adjust the underlying layers that create the effect. What you can do is click on a layer to adjust its opacity and also to paint on its layer mask. If you want to be able to adjust the underlying layers, you'll need to run the individual actions like Vintage Pram or this little piggy. Now that the action has finished running, you'll see that none of the folders are turned on. To see the various effects, you have to click in the holder for the eyeball and the layers will turn on. You can turn on multiple layers if you'd like to combine the effects. If you want to adjust the effect of any folder, Click on the layer to make sure it's active. You can increase or decrease the strength or opacity of the layer. And you can paint on the layer mask to hide the effects of the layer from one specific part of your image. For the three black and white actions, which are bedtime, nap time, and playtime, you can see when you hover your cursor over those three layers, it's going to remind you to turn on the black and white layer right here. So if you want black and white, you start with the base and then you can turn on playtime or nap time. I like playtime with its warm hues for this image. So just remember that if you're running diaper bag mix and match, this is an easy way to combine the various workflow looks, um, but you do not have access to edit the layers that go into each folder. Let's look at this picture of the twins and let's run, let's do another black and white on this one. I'm going to run bedtime. Now, you'll see that when you don't have your layers grouped into a folder, you'll have instead a clipping mask. A clipping mask looks like this. You'll see that there are arrows pointing down from the layers onto the bottom layer, which is the controlling layer. This particular one is called Adjust Bedtime. If I turn Adjust Bedtime off, it turns off all the layers above. If I adjust the opacity, it will increase the strength of all the layers above or decrease the strength. If I want to increase or decrease the strength of just one layer, I can do that here. For instance, if I wanted to adjust this mid-tone booster layer, I could turn it off individually or I could increase or decrease its opacity. I could also paint on the layer mask to hide the effect just from a specific area of the face. So to do that, because this layer mask is white, white reveals the effect everywhere. I use the color black to hide the effect from a given part of the image. So with my brush selected and black as my foreground color, I can paint over the faces. And now you can see on my layer mask, two black spots where I've hidden the effects of this layer from those two spots only, but not from the rest of the image. Another thing to note about these clipping masks is that if you run multiple actions, you might encounter an error message that mentions clipping masks. If you encounter this error message, that means that you need to press stop in the message, flatten your image by right clicking and selecting flatten. And then after you flattened, you can run the next action with no problem. 
before flattening, make sure that you are happy with all the edits you've made so far because you won't be able to change these layers once you do flatten. I'm going to leave this edit in black and white, but I do want to soften and smooth the baby's skin some. So I'm going to go down to our retouching section and I'm going to run baby lotion. So when you run the actions for the first few times, definitely go through and read all the instructional messages that you're given. You can see down here that new layers are being built. And we end up with this new folder called Baby Lotion. Anytime you get a message in Elements asking you if you want to continue or stop, you want to hit continue unless you want to cancel the effects of the action. If you hit stop, the action will be undone. So in most cases, you only want to do that if you get an error message like the clipping mask message. So once we finish running Baby Lotion, you'll see that we end up with a black layer mask. That means that the effect is hidden everywhere and we want to paint it in. This is going to soften and smooth skin, but I don't want it to soften and smooth details on these hats, for instance. I want to retain the sharpness there. So I've got my paintbrush selected. My paint color is white, and I'm going to reduce the opacity of my brush to about just under 50% here. And I'm going to make the brush a bit smaller by using my square bracket key that faces to the right. I'm going to paint on the baby's forehead and cheeks, but I'm going to try to avoid the eye area and the lips. Just the places that I want to stay soft. And so now you can see over here that I've got a light area where I've painted on the baby's skin. I'll show you a before and after. That's very slight so that you can see it better by the video. I'm going to turn up the opacity. And now here's a before and after. You can see that it's really smoothed up the skin on the forehead and gotten rid of some of the flaky dry skin that brand new babies have. I can also, because I see some flakiness on this arm, I'm going to increase the brush opacity and paint in softness and smoothness right down there on that arm. It looks like the rest is okay. Now I'm going to use the sharp eyelashes layer to add some detail to those eyelashes. It's hard sometimes to see uh, brand new baby's eyelashes, so it looks great in photography if we emphasize those eyelashes just a bit. You can also use this layer on lips, which I'll show you shortly. I'm going to bring down the opacity. This is a pretty strong action, so I'm gonna bring it down just a touch. I'm just gonna paint over those eyelashes. You can see that it really emphasizes them, makes them pop a bit. I do want to avoid the creases under the baby's eyes. And now I'm going to go down here to the lips and brush over those. Now when you've run a black and white action, this might bring a little bit of color back into the lips as you see here. If you notice that, just click and drag sharp eyelashes under the bedtime base layer. This is another function of the clipping masks. Um, because the clipping mask is between the sharp eyelashes and the black and white. You do need to move sharp eyelashes under the black and white. I'm going to conclude this edit by adding a quick black and white vignette. So I'll just double click that. And now we've got a quick and easy vignette. I'll show you a before and after on this image. There's a before. And there's where we ended up. Nice soft skin and a very soft and creamy looking black and white. Next, we're going to go to this image of a baby whose skin has got a little more red in it than is ideal. I am going to start this edit by running the diaper bag because I wanna combine a couple of looks for this one. So the diaper bag is going to run all of our workflow actions for us.
Now that the action is finished running, I'm going to turn on the sugar and spice layer and the twinkle twinkle layer. I really like the look that those two layers combined give to the reds. I am going to increase twinkle twinkle just a little bit. And I'm happy with that look right now. Now you'll notice that these two layers have already removed some of the red from the baby's skin tone. We're going to reduce it further uh, in just a little bit, but, but even these workflow actions you'll find are going to reduce red newborn skin pretty easily. The next thing I'm going to do is run the crying for contrast action, just so we can really play up the, the colors in this image. I like that a lot. It brings the deepness back into the red. Next, I am going to do some spot red removal by running this paint on red baby fix. So again, this action is going to give me a black layer mask, which means that the effect of the action is hidden everywhere and I have to paint it in. Now you'll see that we recommend a brush opacity of somewhere between 20 and 35%. So with my brush selected with white, I'm going to bring down the opacity to um, probably mid 20s right there. And I'm going to make my brush a little bit bigger. I'm using a soft round brush and I'm just gonna paint over some of the redder areas of the baby's skin. I want to avoid the lips. And note that I can also do, I can go back over a spot that's particularly red and give it a second coat of paint. I can also remove some of the redness from the hands. You're not limited just to faces here. But we'll tone down the red right there. So let me give you a before and after just on that layer. That makes the skin look, look much calmer. You can also use this on the feet really anywhere you want to. We've got some redness going on down here. I might put a couple of coats of paint. Okay, so one more time. There's a before, there's an after. That's a particularly nice effect on the feet. And one more time, I'm going to run the sharp eyelashes action, which I really do like. And with my brush just a bit smaller, I'm going to run right over the baby's eye line and eyelashes. My brush opacity is low, so I'm going to give it two or three coats right there. Also going to pull this over the baby's lips here just to kind of increase that shine. Now, finally, I want to add some kind of depth of field to this image, add a little extra blur. So I'm going to go down here and run baby focused. Now this action does flatten your image. So make sure before you run it that you are finished editing all of these layers. So I'll hit continue. And when this action finishes running, it's going to prompt me to select my gradient tool. The gradient tool is right over here. So I'm going to select the gradient tool and it wants me to select the radial gradient, which is the second one. So I'm going to click on that and I am going to click from the area that I want to be in focus to the edge of my photo. The further away I drag, and I can even go outside, the less blur there's going to be. So you can see now that the eye here where I started drawing is perfectly in focus and I've applied blur that gets uh, heavier and heavier as I dragged out. So you can see here that this eye where I started drawing the gradient is perfectly in focus and more and more blur is being applied as we progress out. Now, if I want to redo it, all I do is type Command or Control Z to undo my painting. And I can 
change the length or area of where I've drawn. You can see over here the layer mask that shows you where your painting is, and I can even touch that up with a paintbrush if I wanted to. Now finally, I'm going to end our instructions today with this baby in a purple blanket whose skin is just a little bit grayer than we'd like. We're going to warm it up just a bit. I'm going to start by running the Pick Me Up workflow action, which is back up here in the red section, the first red section. This is going to give us a nice color pop that is not too heavy for running on a baby. And next, I'm going to run the Lavender Lovey Haze from the gray section. So you can see that that adds a nice soft haze with just a touch of lavender added to us. I'm going to next go down to the color correction section and run the Paint On Formula which is going to give us a series of layers all with black layer mask that I can paint in the effects that I want. So you can see that each layer will increase one color and decrease another. So for instance, minus red plus cyan is going to decrease the reds and increase the cyans. For this one, because I want to warm up the skin just a bit, I am going to increase the yellow and increase the red. So I'm going to select my paintbrush, and I do want a low opacity on this action as well. Um, and to warm it up, I'm going to add a combination of yellow and red, as I said, and I'm just going to paint over the baby skin. And then I'll do the same right here on the increase red layer. And so now doing a before and after. That skin is looking just a bit healthier. I can also turn off these two layers where I painted. So there's a before the color correction and there's the warmer after version. And so now because this baby could use some brightening in the skin tones, I'm going to run the dusting of baby powder action, which brightens up the entire image, I am going to type Command I, which turns my layer mask black. On a PC, that's Control I, and on a Mac, it's Command I. And then with a brush whose opacity is maybe in the mid-60s to 70s, I'm just going to paint in the brightening just to the baby skin. and a touch to the hair as well. Now going back and looking at the hair, I see that the hair's got some red skin underneath it. I'm going to actually use this reducing red layer. I'm gonna take the opacity on my brush down and just paint real lightly over those red spots in the hair to kind of equalize that color. I can do the same right, right here. This is a particularly red spot picking up some reflection from the blanket. Now to smooth out some of that flaky skin, I'm going to run baby lotion. And again, with this black layer mask, I can paint in white wherever I want the skin to be softer and smoother. I'm going to bring up the opacity of the brush just a touch. Now there's another action that I can run that I want to show you before we finish today that's called Magic Baby Lotion. And this action actually finds the skin for you. So I'm going to delete the Baby Lotion folder and I'm going to run Magic Baby Lotion. This action works similarly to our Studio White and Studio Black backdrops. So if you need help with those, definitely pay attention to this part of the tutorial. Again, this is an action that will flatten, and you'll want to pay very close attention to the messages the first couple of times that you play the action. That prior message prompted me to select the Add to Sample eyedropper, which is the second one 
that has a plus sign on it. With that eyedropper selected, I am going to click on the baby skin until most of it turns white. And I can disregard the outlying areas there. I can clean that up really quickly. And then one more time, I'm going to get a message prompting me to select the white eyedropper, which is right here. And then click on the skin until most of it is a bright or a white color. What we're doing is building the layer mask here. And you can see that I've got the layer mask in those outlying areas where some of the masking um, went too far. I can use a black brush at 100% opacity make my brush really big and just brush over those areas to bring my layer mask back to full black in the outlying areas and so now we've got baby skin that is quite soft I'll turn it off and on to show you the difference I can adjust the opacity if I want to but I don't think I need to I am going to sharpen the eyelashes seems like that's a great edit on just about every photo and after sharpening the eyelashes, that will do it for this tutorial. So with a white brush selected, slightly lower opacity, and again using the square bracket keys to adjust the size of my brush. That is the edit of this baby. Thank you so much for listening. Again, this is Erin teaching you how to use MCP's Newborn Necessities in Photoshop Elements. If you have any questions, please email me at erin, E-R-I-N, at mcpactions.com. Thank you and have a great day.